In this lesson, we will see how we can create this chair. As always, I will start with a cube. Okay, I'm turning my cre interactive creation off so that the moment I click on it, I get the cube in the origin. I'll press 5 to see the shaded mode. I'll go to inputs and I want to make this a bit wider and longer. So in width, I will choose 5 units. In depth, I will choose 5 units. I'm going to leave the height to 1 unit, just like that. Now I want to add some segments. So in order to add segments, I can choose the divisions value. So for width, I'm going to give 8 divisions so that I'll be able to create some smoothness between them. And for depth, I can have some 2 to 3 divisions. So let's do 3. OK, I think that's fair enough. OK, in height, I can have 2 divisions. I think it's better to add this height division at the end. So I'll leave it 1. Now let me go to the side view and create the profile of it. Let's go to right click and choose vertex. Select all these vertices. That means you can select all these vertices. Okay. I can show you the, all the full views so that you can see what is going on. I'll choose d press W to get the move tool. You can also get the move tool by clicking on this move tool here. And I'll just move it down. I'll move this down a bit. This one a tiny bit. Okay, that way I have created the profile shape there. Okay, now I want to add this uh, horizontal division. I can go ahead and choose edge, select any one of these edges, and press up arrow in the keyboard. Okay, it is supposed to select this entire ring, but if it doesn't, you just press it one more time. Because sometimes Maya gets confused on whether to select the edge loop or the edge ring. Now I can go to make sure that you're in polygons, okay, and go to edit mesh and choose connect components so that adds up an entire edge loop, okay. Now like, let me right click and choose vertex, select all these vertices and pull them out so that we get this nice smooth result. Okay, so this is the sitting area of the chair. And now to create some uh, nice looking detail, all I can do is choose edge and choose one, select the alternative edges and three. And I just want to pull this slightly down. Always use particular axis, do not move in the middle, so that will create movement in all the axes which will be hard for you to manage. So that creates this nice smooth result. Let's go ahead and smooth this and see how it looks. Let's press 3. Okay, that's nice. Okay, now let me create the other part of the chair. Again, I'll use a cube. Create polygon primitives, cube. And I just want this width to be matching exactly the same. So I'll give five. Okay, so that matches up perfectly. And I want to pull it up. Instead of giving a value directly here, it, I want to do it manually because I want to have a smooth bending there. So let's go ahead and choose the side view. Okay, I'll go to my vertex mode, select these two vertices, and pull up. Okay, you can manually push it to any shape I want. Let me just push it slightly down, slightly. Just manual movements. Okay. Now I have to make this look smooth. I need to do a couple of things. I need to add segments here. Let me just turn on the wireframe on shaded. So I want to have the same number of edge loops. Now after creating, after after moving the vertices, if we just go ahead and change here, it won't give us the exact result that we want. So what we can do is, instead we can use a tool here called Insert Edge Loop Tool. 
so instead of just clicking on that if you just click on that you can just create as many font uh, edge loops as you want but it won't match perfectly with what we have so what we can do is alternatively we can go to the same tool but instead of clicking on the tool we'll go to the options insert edge loop tool options so in the options we have a choice to have multiple edge loops now let's choose seven because we have actually have seven edge loops I guess let's see one two three four five six seven yes so I'll choose seven here now click any one of these edges see it creates seven edge loops and equally placed so you can see that it is matching up matching up perfectly well now I'll have to add a couple of segments in the middle just to bend the shape to be to look like an arc so I'll just bring this back to how it was or I can also choose equal distance so that will just add one edge loop sorry I should choose multiple edges and make it one okay so let's see so that adds up one edge loop exactly in the middle now let me choose the move tool I can also press W key okay and push it slightly down so that brings it there let me do the same thing I'll choose the same last used tool here click on it that adds an edge loop press W to change to move tool and move it slightly Let's do the same thing here once again okay and press W to get the move tool and move it slightly so that creates a nice looking arc okay good enough now we'll have to add a cylindrical shape in the top so in order to add that I can just go ahead and create polygon primitives cylinder okay let's pull it up I have to rotate it 90 degrees in Z axis so let me choose uh, Z axis rotation and I can give a value here 90 90 degrees and I don't want to have these many segments so I have to reduce the number of segments go to subdivision axis now it's 20 I'll make it as 8 and this length has to fit the exact same length so we know that the height is already uh, 5 units so I'll just give the same exact value now we have to match it up to this place so let's go to the side view and see how it looks okay so in the side view all I can do is choose the move tool push it where we want okay that looks nice we cannot match it exactly uh, perfect so let's approximately keep this one point matched up this one we can move it later now what I have to do is I have to combine these two objects into one so before combining we'll have to delete all these faces that are in the middle okay so that they can merge these two objects into one single object so let me just go ahead and select the faces okay so I can just click on these faces to select them I can use wireframe mode if you if I want to see it clearly or I can do that in shaded mode now it is visible so we can do it in shaded mode itself press shift and select all these faces delete okay so we have made a hollow there we'll have to do the same thing for up this one uh, for the cylinder it is not that visible so one thing that we can do is we can either move the object from this place we can move it slightly up or we can also go to the wireframe mode and do the same thing I will add some segments here before doing that I need to have the same number of segments so let's see uh, subdivision axis subdivision height subdivision height I'll have to press 7 8 because we need 8 divisions so let's try if it is matching up yes it matches up perfectly well now I'll have to delete all these extra faces 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and delete them so we've got hollow here we've got hollow here let's go ahead and push this down okay now in order to make these two objects into one object we have got to do two steps so the first step is to combining the two objects into one object the second step is to attach these small holes so let's go ahead and select both of them let's make sure that we are in object mode okay select both of them and go to mesh combine 
Now this process makes these two objects into one object. Now if I have, if I just select one, it will select both. But still, there is gaps that we have to fix. So in order to fix these gaps, what we have to do is, I can shift right click and choose merge, merge vertex to, okay? Alternatively, I can g also get the same thing from here. Should be merge vertex to, okay? So now let's go ahead and click and drag these vertices. So if I want to attach this vertex to this one, click and drag. So that merges the vertex. So click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. We have to continue doing the same thing throughout. Okay, and click and drag click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. And that's it. Now they are merged, combined and merge, merged together. That works as one single object. Now let's create some little smoothness. Let's go to edge. I'll select alternative edges, one, two, three. I should select these also, one, two, three. And up here, one, two, three. And down here, one, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and scale these. Okay. And I'll just pull it out just to even out the space. Okay. I'll continue doing the same with these things. So let's see. One, two, three. Press W, remove tool, just push it slightly inwards. Okay. Now I'll do just these two things. I'll just pull them out a bit. Now you can add more segments and create more complicated bends and curves depending on your wish. So let's go ahead and smooth these two things out. Yes. Okay. So that is the two pieces done. Now we'll have to create this handle and the bottom area. So let's start for the handle with a cube. So let's go ahead and choose polygon primitives, cube, I'll pull the cube out. I think I'll have to make it smaller. Let me go to the side view because side view gives us better visual here. So let's see. Okay. So I'll make it smaller. I want to make some tweakings here. We'll go to vertex mode. Push this vertex down. Push this slightly to the corner. Okay. Now I'll do some extrudes select this face now even from the side view we can select this face that is not pointing towards us the, the one that's pointing to the side so if you just go to the edge you can click on that or if it is looking confusing to you the better thing is to go to the perspective view okay the perspective view you can select the right one so extrude hold shift key and right click to get the extrude mode okay you can just pull this down i can use my move tool this to the side I can manually move these vertices okay y if you want to just leave it with one side you can leave it with one side if you want to connect the entire thing you can also do so I'll I'll connect the entire thing okay do another extrude I can pull it just like this or I can also use the move tool and move it out but never extrude and keep it in the same place that will give you problems later Okay, whenever you do an extrude, just move that extruded phase out from there. Okay, I think the bottom area can be a little bit thinner compared to the top one. Let's go to the face, go to the side face, extrude, pull it out, keep this in the same place. Okay, go to work face mode, 
select the face, extrude face, and pull it out. Let's go to vertex. I like to do one more face extrude. Let's click on the face side face, extrude face, take it out. Okay, face, select the outside face, extrude. Okay, now I have to combine these, this two area. So let's go there. I'll delete this side. I'll have to delete this side also. Now the same way as I did before, I can go to vertex, let me select this model, merge, merge vertex tool. So let me select this vertex, merge it there, this vertex merge it there, this one merge it there, this one merge it there, that's it. Now depending on your personal preferences you can have more edge loops. So let me add a couple of edge loops, insert edge loop tool, so add one there, pull it up. I'll have to add one more here, so it's adding up in the middle. If you want to add edge loop in a different place you'll have to change the settings. I'll add one here also. Let's see what we have. You can have one here. Pull it inwards. You can have a couple of them here. The more you add, the more edge loops you add, the more smoothness you will have. At the same time, you should also think about how much segments you want to have because the more edge loops you have, the more heavier your files become. Let's smooth it out, see how that looks, that's nice. If you an add, want to add a couple of screws or something like that, you can also do that. Now I'll duplicate this to get to the other side. I'll select the model, control D for duplicate, or you can also get the same thing from edit, duplicate. The shortcut key is control D. So let's go here, push it out, let's place it right about there okay and this one also a little bit out select the model okay good enough so let's push everything up press w key make sure in object mode push it I think that much of height is enough now we'll create a cylinder create polygon primitives cylinder push it up scale it down I think I'll have to have to add some segments here let me increase the height just so that it touches there okay and I'll add some segments here so let's see height segments you can do something like five I think that's good enough and I don't want to have this bottom one so I'll choose this divisions cap to be zero I'll extrude this down, scale it out. I'm just randomly creating a nice shape. I'll, I pushed it down. I'll make another extrude. Right, shift right click, extrude face, pull it down. One more out, extrude, pull it down do one more slightly extrude I think I'll just put this down okay extrude face pull it down okay extrude face pull it down okay that looks nice if you want you can have one more extrude to make it smoother. Okay. Now I'll have to create the side one. Let's go to side view, create a cube, polygon primitives cube, make it smaller, keep it somewhere there. You can actually move the vertices because I'll have to rotate this entire object. Uh, so I'll just move these vertices. Okay, and I'll add 
I think I'll just scale this front one a little bit down, push it, sorry, over to the side. Let's measure how much we want. Bring it right about there. I'll have to do a couple of extrudes. Go to face mode, select this outside face. Now the easiest thing is you can go to perspective view and select it. Yes. Okay. I'll do an extrude. Pull it out. Now I can either extrude from down or I can also extrude. I can just modify this and extrude it down. I think I'll just extrude it from down. So extrude, pull it down. Now I can make some slight tweaks in the side view. Let's go to the side view. Make it look like that. Okay. Uh, if you don't like it, you can also undo the step. This is one way. The second method is you can just push these vertices down here and push this down here. You'll have to move these two. I'll extrude from the bottom here. Extrude. Push it down. I'll go to the side view again. The side view is always easy to move these vertices. So this is another method, whichever you are comfortable with, you can do it. If you want, you can also add an edge loop there. That creates a bit more smoothness. Okay, you can add a couple of edge loops here. In case if you're wondering how this edge loops are creating in the middle, that is from the tool options. I've made it as multi edge loops and made it one. If you keep it relative distance, that is the default option. You can create edge loops anywhere you want. Okay, I'll add one in the bottom. Okay, that's done. Now let me create wheels. Let's go to create. Uh, cylinder, okay. Let's scale it down. Smaller size, rotate it 90 degrees. I have to make the radius to be smaller. Let's see, 0.1. That's too small, 0.3. I think that should work out. Let's go ahead and push it out. Let's see, 0.25. Point two would be perfect, I think. Yes, I'll make it smaller also. I will do the same thing as I did before. I'll make this cap divisions to be zero. That will be easy for me to modify it. Okay, so I'll just push it out. Now I'm going to extrude from two sides. So I'll select this face and shift select this face, extrude face. See what happens? It extrudes in both the sides, which is nice. I'll also scale it down. Scale it up a bit. I'll do one more e extrude. Okay. Scale it down again. I'll do one more extrude. Take it in. I'll do one more extrude. Scale it down and push it in. Sorry. If you ever lose your uh, manipulator, you can also get it back from here. So let me push it back in. So this goes in, that goes in, that creates a nice tire looking thing. Okay, you want to add more details, you can also extrude further, just push it in. You can do one more extrude, push it out. Okay, so that's up to you. Okay. You can also add an edge loop in the middle. Uh, this time I'll use a different tool. I'll select one edge. Sorry, one edge. 
press up arrow that selects the entire edge loop edge ring sorry uh, and I can choose connect component so that adds an edge loop in the middle so if I want to make it non flat in the center I can just select this press R feel the depth nice okay so let's push this to the side I'll make one more copy of the wheel control D okay and I'll have a uh, select these two push it aside see how it looks from the front view okay let me choose the object mode okay good enough now I can have just a cube and I can just simply extrude from here no it's better to have a separate cube cube make it smaller push it in Okay, perfect. So this entire thing is going to be one single piece. I'll have to make four more copies of this. So I'll select the whole thing and I'll create it as a group. In order to create a group, we can go to modify, sorry, edit, group. So when I make a group, all these things becomes one single piece, kind of like a piece, because all of them will be put into one container. So we can move them together. Otherwise, we'll have to make duplicates of them individually. So once I create a group, you notice that the pivot point of the group comes to the center. So I can just rotate all of them. And I'll rotate them and create more copies. So in order to do that, we can go to Edit, Duplicate Special. Control-D will give you Duplicate. I'll choose Duplicate Special, Control-Shift-D. And go to the Options. And I'll just reset everything just to make sure that there is no values there. And I want to rotate it to 72 degrees. So I'll use rotation Y as 72 because I want four more copies. I'll choose number of copies to be four. I'll choose duplicate special. There you go. So we got a total of four, five legs. And that's our finished chain.